Thank you for joining us. This is Paul Wilson. And Chris Emke. You're listening to Diesel Performance Podcast. Chris, you're back in the studio. I am. I forgot where this place even was. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, it's been a little while since we've been able to connect and get together on yeah. the show. Uh, but don't worry. Justin Tyson's been helping us out. Yeah. Anthony Bernani's been helping us out. Damn. All of the great guests out there, uh, guys jumping in, helping us out, putting the show together. Honestly, just seriously, thank you guys all so much. Yeah, no, it means a lot. Um, work, things about this year, you know, different than years prior. So not being in the office uh, every day has its uh, benefits, and it also has some weaknesses, and that would be one of the weaknesses, I'd say. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, it has been crazy uh, busy over at Duramax Tuner Calibrated yeah. Power, where Chris and I actually get paid to be. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, that's a great thing, guys. Please keep calling in. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. I've had a lot of you reach out to Chris uh, via email yeah. or reach out to the Facebook page. Please do so. We always love to hear from you. Uh, if you want to give us a call, that's 815 815- five six eight seventy nine twenty and that you can get chris at extension two one two one i should remember that one of these days yeah it's like the best number possible eh, ish anyways uh <laughs> <laughs> what i did also want to say uh you guys know we use exergy for a reason and that's because we always get the highest quality most consistent uh and honestly also readily available high performance uh yeah. high performance high pressure fuel system products it- it's been it's been wild this year. Just the the volume I think is up at least the, with with things that we're doing, and yeah. I've been doing a lot of exergy components. And uh, two things: one, it's amazing how many things are on the shelf, or two, if it's not on the shelf, uh, you know, Rob or Harvey or Randy over there will be like, oh yeah, you know, four or five business days and two business days tracking numbers sent it's getting shipped so they care about what they do they take a lot of pride in it and i think that shows when uh you know they, they have stuff on the shelf or not on the shelf and they get it out in a nice timely manner so Absolutely. greatly appreciated and hey uh right along next to them we're also talking about wc fab guys i know they were planning on having their 10th anniversary sled pole uh here tomorrow yep, that's september rescheduled 12. for uh september 19th you got it yep so th- yep. that is getting pushed out a weekend uh it's been a monsoon over here so hey thank oh, god yeah. it's not fires please everyone stay safe yep. uh in your respective areas throughout the country but for us it w- we've just been getting pounded with rain up yep. here in the midwest it's crazy all summer no rain yeah no rain at all i haven't had to mow my lawn more than four times wow it's been great. you're crazy yeah. i want to use my lawn more so it's it's been tough well i i do too but my rider and the the hill with the elevation yeah, i'm on it yeah. gets a little sketchy that, so. it's like therapeutic for me like i actually enjoy it yeah yeah i okay yeah <laughs> And that's when you know you're new to owning a lawn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so big, big shout out to WC Fab, Jason, Ryan, the whole crew, all the Whirly Brothers and all the guys over there. Uh, we're excited for that sled pull event. It's going to be one of the only ones this year. Uh, so we know it's going to be a big deal for us. I'm sure it's going to be a huge turnout. Chris, I-, I wanted to get through our our beginning part here pretty quickly today because I- I'm excited about getting into today's topic you and i have been talking about hey man we've had to do some rebroadcasts lately we've had to to rehash or or borrow over or bring over some diesel insights uh videos lately which by the way reception has been great i think people really like hearing the diesel insights it's really informative tracks on on here uh guys if you like them please let us know jump on to the fans of diesel performance podcast facebook group let us know yeah hey we love diesel insights or uh you know hey we'd we'd like to hear more interviews we're always welcoming that type of feedback. Uh, but today we wanted to do something a little bit different uh, and kind of go through a top 10 list. Yeah. So we've done top 10 lists before, mm. but I think we've learned about them. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> you know, as, as we were talking about what's the new, next episode going to be about, guys, this is probably uh, this list and this breakdown is like the easiest way to break down what type of questions i get on a day-to-day basis at the shop sure guys call in hey i'm new to this truck yada 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 what are some upgrades to make now we're going to be a little more specific with this we're 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 targeting 2011 plus trucks now some of this is going to transfer over into some of the older trucks as well of course but we wanted to do 2011 up because i have we have experience with ford 2011 up duramax 2011 and ram where to some of the listeners that are going to be like ford six liter power stroke guys or six four power stroke guys 
I don't really have a ton of knowledge on that stuff. Like, Same I don't. Here. So this is a way to group in, hey, you have a 2011 plus Duramax, Cummins, or Ford, and you want to look at what's the best bang for your buck or what's a, a recipe, if you will, for where to plan to invest your money and what you're going to see as a return on that. We decided here's your top 10 list. That's right. And, and Chris and I, we have talked so much about do it right the first time. What I think we're going to get better at in the future is explaining what right the first time is. Yeah. Uh, so here we go. Let's kick it off. Number one, best bang for your buck, smartest investment. If you have a 2011 plus diesel, so Duramax, Cummins, Power Stroke, and honestly, pretty much any vehicle you own, yeah. uh, biggest bang for your buck, it's going to be custom tuning. Yeah. No question. Hands down. And why? You know, why Why is that, Paul? I, I love that question. So. Here, here's how it works. Your factory gave gave the engineers a lot of room on how to build a very reliable, very robust truck that's competitive with all of the other manufacturers out there. Uh, then they came back and the bean counters in the warranty department said, hey, you need to dial the power back so that we can put a warranty behind this. Uh, because anybody with credit can go out and buy one of these trucks and they can hook up loads all the way to gross vehicle weight and they can drive over the Eisenhower Pass and we have to we, we as the OEM would have to pay for any damages that would happen. Now, in the custom market, we can spend more time educating our customers and say, hey, man, when you're towing, keep it down in a safe tow tune. But when you're not towing, use that extra horsepower, that built-in overhead that's already there. Huh? So tuning is going to completely change the peak horsepower output of the truck, the, the shift quality of the truck, the drivability of the truck. That is going to be your windshield experience. So th I think that's why you're always going to get the bang for the buck there. Also, unless you're into like maybe an L5P where they're a little bit more of an investment, much cheaper now than when they first came out. Yep. Um it's also one of the more affordable mods. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right? bang for your buck, as I like to refer to it as. You know, I tell guys, you know, if I'm going to make a recommendation, I want you to be able to say, hey, you know, this is what I got for my investment because you're investing into the platform. That's right. Um, you know, and, and to touch on, you know, guys call back or guys will question, well, why didn't they just do this from the factory? Think of, think of your standard 2012 LML Duramax. They have... Regular cabs, cab and a halves, they have four doors, they have long beds, they have short beds, they have single rear wheels, they have dualies, they have 4,500 uh, or 3,500 like cab chassis trucks. So they have so many different platforms, but one engine, one trans to work across those platforms. That's right. The guy that buys the 3,500 cab chassis is going to probably use that truck differently than the guy that buys the 2,500 uh, $2, Denali. Right? Sure. So you also, know, if you're Cummins, you need to leave room for the end of your run to release a high output version and charge everybody right, more for the same truck course. for with an a extra better 20, 30 horsepower. Right. Exactly. So yeah. bang for your buck. Number one, guys, tuning. You know, a lot of these trucks they have the ability to, you know, uh, be turned up and not be limited on exhaust or air intake or things like that. So tune only 500 plus horsepower. All three brands. Yeah, if absolutely. If you're 2011 plus, no question, yeah. we can do it. So number two, right now, now. Oh, guys, guys call in. They say, hey, you know, bang for your buck. What do I got to do? Tuning. Well, then you get the, well, what else can I do? Right? <laughs> so nothing else on this list is going to be as cheap and affordable and as easy to make that initial power. Okay. Sure. Dollar per horsepower slides right. from here. Now we need to be smart. And as educators in this space, we need to educate reliability. OK, so number two, um, this is going to be more for the Ford and GM crowd from well, GM 2011 to 16 and Ford, uh, basically 2011 all the way through 2019. Yep. Um, and that would be uh, a very small, simple part. And it's called the fuel system saver that actually uh, Exergy Performance provides. And what that is, is it's an upgraded regulator OK, that has a reinforcement, if you will, in that other regulator itself to pull back or hold back debris. Okay, yep. And we see a lot of failures come into play on the deemed CP4 pump. And a lot of guys say, oh, the CP4 pumps are junk. Well, the CP4 pump itself really isn't that bad. It's just contaminants get into the system and the regulator can't keep things back. And that's where the quote unquote self-destructing comes into play. So insurance policy, they run you around 240, 260 bucks. It's a couple hour install. That's just going to ensure that you don't have a, a full high pressure system issue. That's right. right. Now, I know Cummins guys are going to cringe when they hear this, but when we interviewed the chief engineer over there, Rod Romain, yeah. 
We actually found out that those trucks also run an HP4, so it's a... The, f- the 819 and newer. The 19 yep, and newer, yep. right? Or running the HP4, not having the same issues from what I've heard. Uh, well, I mean, uh, it, it, tomato, tomato, right? Still a newer platform. Who knows? The technology, things like that. It Maybe different up. filtration. You don't okay. know that. But, you know, uh, as this list is going to continue, usually the number two and the number three, which I'll let you present, these come in at once. Like these, right. even though they're two separate <laughs> products, like we have them labeled, but... Even on two different yep, ends of the truck. But no, realistic, we're Basically, boom, yeah, and hit it. It's a fast lift pump. And, and when we say fast, honestly, it's a lift pump. Yep. Uh, we want tighter Micron filter, so I, I, I just know the fast products better than I know AirDog or Fuel Lab or somebody else. But but I know on fast, we run them down to a three Micron filter. Um, it's a gear-driven pump. It's It should never fail, honestly. Yeah, all, all manufacturers will have some sort of existent mm-hmm. failure rate, but it's very, very low. Yep. Water um, separation. Water separation is huge, uh, so... <laughs> I love when guys ask, well, my truck already has a whiff, a water and fuel sensor. That tells you when you've already fucked up, yep. buddy. Uh, that doesn't tell you when something's going to go bad or prevent well, something from going and bad. And then there's the value of, like, with a Duramax, if you if you have a 2011 to 2016, you actually don't have a supply pump in the tank. So you have a more or less a gravity-fed system where the CP4 actually works as partially a suction to help That's provide right. itself with fuel and then turn it into high pressure. So doing the lift pump, you're taking part of the workload off the CP4. So the lift pump pulls fuel, disperses it to the CP4, then the CP4 turns it into high pressure. On the Cummins and the Ford, they actually have supply pumps in the tank providing fuel. This is just going to do it in a little bit more efficient manner. Um, at the same time, you know, a little bit bigger uh, fuel hose diameters just to help, you know, keep as much fresh number two to the CP3 possible. So volume supply. Yep. It's volume not always supply. just pressure yep. supply. Sometimes yep. it's also volume and supply. And aeration, keeping air out of the system. That's a big yep. thing. You know, you run into that, which there's a lot of claims from various lift pump companies that that will help with overall engine efficiency, right? Yeah. yeah so they, I, I will say this. Lift, every lift pump, and I'm not picking on one over the other, yep. every lift pump marketing material or sales pitch involves a little bit of snake oil salesman yep. in it where where I, I personally will say I have not measured fuel mileage gains by doing just a lift right. pump. Um, we have seen fuel mileage gains from doing like tuning yep. but and, and some other parts, but but I personally yep. have not recorded them on a lift pump. But it's that an doesn't insurance discredit policy. them no, right, by any right. means. You have a very expensive truck. You have a very expensive fuel system. And it's be very smart. expensive to replace. That's right. Know? So it's, a, it's an insurance policy. You know, you're yeah. going to be into, you know, the number two and number three, you know, for, uh, you know, coming around a thousand, you know, when it's all said and done. But that's a thousand dollars well spent, you know. And, and the thing to take away from this is whether you're a hot shotter, you tow on the weekends with the family, you you have a, a self-proclaimed race truck, you, you just daily drive the truck, the lift pump is going to hold a value across all platforms. That's right. So, yeah, we run them in daily drivers yep, all the way up yep. to competition trucks. So next on the list here, and uh, I like where this is going, is the, depending on the use of the truck, right, you need to plant the power to the ground. So, you know, to the normal guy, you know, you, you're tuned up, you're 500 horsepower, you got your badass lift pump on the truck, you need to harness that power to the ground. That's right. right. So traction bars, you know, traction bars are, they hold a lot of value. They keep the truck planted. They keep things stable. Now, the Cummins, depending on what year you have, might be a little different if you have the newer four links set up, like what's on a lot of the newer, you know, 13 plus four gens. You don't run traction bars, right? Because sure. you have the four link. But if you have a general, you know, leaf spring setup, like, you know, the GMs and the Fords and some Dodges as well. Traction bars are going to go a long way, and the bang for your buck's definitely there. That's right. So axle wrap. So basically what happens is as you take off, um, your tires are being driven by by a gearing system, mm-hmm. essentially, uh, and that that creates the axle to actually have resistance because there's, there's a lot of lag in all of that momentum, yep. right? So your tires start spinning, then the frame starts moving. Well, there's... There's moving, there's flexible parts that are somewhat in between there. And where we see that flex are places we have concerns. So so we actually see the- Universal joints. Yep. Yep, drive shafts. They actually start to peel around 180 degrees rotating towards the ground. Um, This plants them and holds them in place so that they cannot rotate at all. Uh, I've had guys ask weird questions. Does this affect steering, ride quality, road noise? I'd say no to the average user on all of those. Maybe a little bit more stiff- Stiffness in the rear end? Depending on the type of of track bar that you run, because I have had some in the past that really ruin the ride, but your basic track bar that's going to go from the frame to the rear axle, 
and you set it up appropriately, it really shouldn't hinder the driving experience for your normal everyday driving. There you go. So absolutely correct. Um, and then I, I, number five, man, what this, do we got this here? one, Chris? I always hit this one because I am a I am a gauge lover. Like mm-hmm. I love to see all of the data. So of course we threw the Edge uh, Insight CTS three because that's the newest digital gauge monitor. Honestly, if you're running Easy Link and you have a, a fancy yep. tablet in the truck or you just like your cell phone better, totally fine. Uh, if you're old school and you really want to run manual gauges, cool. I hate pillar gauges with a passion, but some guys like them if that's your thing. My, my real point here is on a 2011 and newer truck, we have a lot of engine monitoring that's going on via the ECM. Yep. Giving you access to that information can be very, very powerful when we're talking about an emissions-equipped, increased horsepower vehicle. Well, not even that, but the segue from where that is, I I like where that recommendation and that upgrade is because you have the guys, and I hate calling them stages, right? Like, oh, you have stage one, you have stage two, but the first three, four things that were recommended, that's like grouped into like a stage one type scenario. Sure. Then guys say, well, what's next? What's more, right? And you start getting to this nitty gritty of what the truck's doing, how the truck's responding. Well, they just know they want more power. They don't know how the truck's <laughs> actually reacting. This gives them a foundation and a basis to say, okay, this is what the truck's doing under this type of workload, under these type of you know scenarios. I want to see this improve. And then yeah. that pretty much lets us get into the next round of, of upgrades, which... You know, you've done the tuning, you've done a lift pump, you've done some of these things, you know, kind of the next thing in line. And I, number six and number seven can kind of be a toss up there. But, you know, uh, the next limiting factor essentially would be like the turbochargers efficiency or inefficiency, for that matter, providing air. That's right. And and right after that, where we're saying what's interchangeable is doing a built trans or a valve body yeah. upgrade. And I agree with you, Chris. And, and the reason I had a tough time of picking the six and seven spot was was just like you said we generally run out of turbo right as we start to run out of reliability in our transmission yep. across most of the yep. platforms here um what i did find was really interesting is recently over at duramax tuner we had done a survey of guys who had actually bought turbos and found out how extremely common it is to have a drop-in upgraded turbo on a stock transmission yep. Because you have plans of going bigger in the future. A couple things there, you know. You have a you have a truck, you know. I mean, these, you know, you think about a 2011 right now, and almost the end of 2020. You know, th- this truck's 10 years old. Yeah. This truck, I mean, I've I've seen LMLs with 900,000 million miles on them. You know, Ooh. you can find these trucks with two, three hundred thousand miles without any problem. There's going to be some upgrades that need to take place. So. Yeah. Doing the turbocharger, and when you look at the uh, the cost of uh, a reman, you know, replacement versus an upgraded from stock charger, it gives you a couple options. It gives you the ability to broaden the torque curve that the truck operates under, help yep. EGT management with air volume improvement, and build a foundation to grow. So there might be the guy that has the trans fail before the turbo fails. Well, then they build the trans, and then they're you know creating a path to do the turbo upgrade, or vice versa. That's right. The turbo failed, and there's really no reason to get rid of the trans. The trans works. When it fails, we'll replace it. So you see a lot of that. Um, so there's there's real no like blueprint to what's better or not. At the same time, you can throw a turbocharger on one of these trucks, and it's not going to be too aggressive for the stock trans if your tuner tunes everything accordingly and you drive it accordingly. I think that's a really good so point to make. There's a lot of references here with, or a lot of scenarios here where you can add a lot of these parts, help improve the efficiency, and it's not going to overextend the reliability of the truck if it all comes together properly. Right. Absolutely. Okay, so that moves us through the built trans, the valve body, the stealth turbo, the gauges, the traction bars, the lift pump, the fuel system saver, the tuning. We got just two steps left. Now, uh, and and I'm sorry, I don't know how to count. We have three steps left. Um, These three steps, Chris, honestly, two of them we could have thrown in at at any time. Any time. You you could do these whenever you want because they're not going to make – a dramatic, oh my God, I own a different truck now. Yep. But they are going to help maximize your efficiency. It's all, and that's these really are all complementing things. About. They're yes, complementing. Exactly. So we, we've we proven, right, if, if we're going to dissect the platform here, because um, number eight, like it's a, it's an intake. Okay, sure. cold, cold air, air intake. intake. Yep. Um, and depending on different marketing and, and different what other companies would recommend, you know, that intake comes in earlier in the recommendations. But we do a lot of testing, a lot of data collection. 
we've proven that, like on the Rams, the factory airbox at 650 horsepower is very efficient. It's still very efficient. There's really no need to replace it. Um, We've proven on the GMs, I mean, 600 horse, 650 horse, like it it can live. Like you could do an intake at that point, um, but it's not like it's a necessity. Um, I would say Ford has the biggest uh, restriction from the factory airbox. Um, And this is more or less, you know, you're going to pay the, you know, 300 bucks for an intake. You're going to slap it on the truck. You might gain a little bit of responsiveness, um, but it's going to help provide air volume up on the top end when you're asking a lot of that turbo. So I always tell guys intake with the turbo upgrade. You yeah. just kind of bundle that together. It makes sense. Um, Absolutely. And then the intercooler piping yep. off of the turbo. So or and and I actually all the way around. And you could throw the intercooler into this. Right. If you're if you're the guy who who thinks that you know overdone is underrated. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. You're going to throw an intercooler in. Most of us more reasonable people are going to grab just the intercooler pipes. I would always do a hot and cold side intercooler pipe. I would never do just one. I'd probably talk to my guys at WC Fab to get those. Um, we're, we're, we're increasing at this point of the build, we're increasing air volume everywhere we can. The more cold air we can get into the combustion chamber, mm-hmm. the better. And And that's better fuel mileage, better peak power, now, better efficiency, better air fuel ratios. Another thing that's going to come those in, are obtainable. you got to think about is guys, when you're doing this and you do an intercooler and intercooler pipe upgrade, the yeah. turbocharger might actually make less boost. Sure. But the power is still going to be there that's or right. could increase because you're um, improving on the pathway in which air gets to travel. Manifold so there's not, air density. Yep. There's Boom. less restriction. So the turbo can run more efficiently. Yep. So it's crazy stuff, but again, these are like the last little bits, it's and pieces that you can do <laughs> to really, you know, hone in. And then once you're there, you butt right up to a high pressure fuel pump upgrade. <laughs> and, and that's what it comes down to. Once you're ready to go to the next level, and that's again across all platforms, before you do injectors, um, you're gonna need a high pressure yep. fuel pump to be able to make more power. So so we've the the first nine we really try to take you guys all the way out there, do as much as you can to make as much power as you can for the best bang for your buck and still have an extremely re- reliable, now, awesome running vehicle. If you want to go over that, it's time to time to get the checkbook out, make that investment, and get into that high-pressure fuel pump, and, and then your injector shortly after. And what's cool with all three platforms here, when you break this down, this is a turnkey 600. I mean, granted, this is rough numbers depending on upgrades, but sure. this is this is a blueprint for a, a 600, 650 horsepower truck that can do it all. That's you know, right. Tow on the weekends, the family camper, or you know, the the the, the quad trailer to and from. You know, whatever. This is you know the truck that you can use to work during the week or commute to and from your job. This could be your family, you know, weekend getaway cruiser. I mean, this can literally be a one vehicle does everything scenario. That's right. So still get good mileage, still refine drivability and char- you know characteristics there. You know, run cool, be responsive, make some power when you get a Mustang up next to you. I mean, literally can do everything. And, and that's that's really what we're hoping to hone in on here for you guys is, is giving you some more actionable items and some solid recommendations about things you can do to your truck to make them better. We'd love to hear from you. Give us give us a call. Uh, you can call over to the shop and get a hold of Chris. Yep, 815-568-7920, extension 2121. Or please, guys, uh, feel free. The podcast Facebook group has been blowing yep. up. We've been getting three to five new entries a yeah. day, which is insane to me. Uh, please keep them coming. If you haven't jumped on yet, come join the conversation. Go in there, make an introduction post. Post about your truck. Give us your list of mods and ask a question, man. There's a ton of knowledge in there, and we're, we're all just happy to share. For today, this has been Paul Wilson. And Chris Emke. Thanks for listening. <laughs> and that's when you know you're new to owning a lawn. Um, <laughs> <laughs>